Hello everyone. Welcome to 2D Board Gamers. My name is Dave and today we're going to look at the third scenario for the upcoming Age of Apocalypse for Marvel Champions. Fantasy Flight has a new article today uh, it's called The Tyrant's Throne and it's the third scenario which is Apocalypse. So let's take a look at the article. The apocalypse is nigh. As we approach the onset of Marvel Champions the Card Game's latest expansion, we want to provide a deeper look at each of the scenarios in the Age of Apocalypse campaign. Today, we're showcasing the campaign's third scenario, which features the titulary Apocalypse himself. Stop the Apocalypse. As we touched on in the Age of Apocalypse announcement article, Apocalypse is a nine invincible tyrant that can't that cannot be defeated through normal means. His villain cards has four different stages, and and which one he starts on he starts at depends on your chosen difficulty. For an easier game, he will start at stage one. For standard difficulty, he starts at stage two. And on Expert, he starts at Stage 3. Unlike most villains, Apocalypse advances his stage each time the main scheme completes, gradually working his way up to Stage 4. Each advancement to the next stage is a permanent transition, which means once Apocalypse powers up, there is no going back. Alright, so that's interesting. I thought it was going to be like a four-stage villain like Kang before, but apparently not. So let's take a look at the stages. We've seen these before, but we'll go over them again. All right, so first of all, uh, first of all, we have stage one. So stage one apocalypse is one scheme to attack toughness. When the main scheme is completed, remove all threat from it ignoring any crisis icons flip this card and reveal apocalypse 2 okay apocalypse 2 is a two scheme to attack steady toughness when the main scheme is completed remove all threat from it ignoring any crisis icons remove this card from the game and reveal apocalypse 3 oh and apocalypse has nine hit points per player he had eight, I believe, in stage one. Uh, stage three, this is where we'll start an expert. Uh, scheme of two, three attack, steady toughness. When the main scheme is completed, remove all threat from it, ignoring any crisis icons. Flip this card and reveal Apocalypse 4. He's got 10 hit points per player. And Apocalypse 4, he's a 3-3. Three, three. Now he's stalwart, tough. Apocalypse attacks gain overkill. Forced interrupt. When the main scheme is completed, the players lose the game. Simply doing damage to Apocalypse won't be enough to stop him. His main scheme, the Age of Apocalypse... Uh, fully heals him each time you would defeat him. Though you do get to remove his attachments. So it's kind of like Hela. Um, more on those in a moment. Along, alongside some free threat removal, in order to defeat Apocalypse for good, you'll need to prove that he's no longer fit to rule. If only it were that easy. And we've got... Um, a fan here. We got Mr. Sinister, the Shadow King, Sugar Man, Abyss, and Michael Mikhail Rasputin. Let's look at Age of Apocalypse here. The Age of Apocalypse, X threat per player. The time has come for a direct assault on Apocalypse in his towering citadel. X is the numeral of Apocalypse's printed hit point value. So it goes 8, 9, 10, 11. So 
um, expert did start at 10. Uh, force interrupt. When Apocalypse would be defeated, discard each attachment from him and heal all damage from him. Instead, remove X threat from this scheme, ignoring any crisis icons. Okay. So solo, it would defeat it, but it would not, you know, in multiplayer, obviously. Just getting to Apocalypse Throne is challenging itself. You and your fellow heroes will have to make your way to the heart of the Empire to ascend the towering citadel, and only then can you reach the tyrant's throne. Clear the throne, and you'll make Apocalypse no longer worthy. However, each step on the way you however, each step of the way your progress is halted and hounded by one of Apocalypse's prelate minions. Mr. Sinister, the Shadow King, Abyss, Sugar Man, and Mikhail Rasputin. You'll, you'll, ha you'll face a random prelate at each step of your journey, and you can't proceed to the next step until you've taken them down. Okay, so let's look at all those cards. Heart of the Empire. Before you can challenge Apocalypse, you must fight your way through his tower. Threat cannot be removed from this scheme while a prelate minion is in play. When defeated, the first player reveals a random set-aside prelate minion. Deal each other player an encounter card. Flip this card over. So it's only got two threat, but we got to deal with the prelates. And this has got an acceleration token on it. All right. Then we have the Towering Citadel. Threat cannot be removed from this same thing. Threat cannot be removed while there's a prelate. There's the when defeated is the same. The first player gets a prelate. Um, everyone else gets an encounter card. Then you reveal a tyrant's throne to remove this card from the game. It's got three threat and two acceleration tokens. And then the tyrant's throne, same thing. Threat cannot be removed while there's a prelate minion. The when defeated is the same. First player will get a set aside prelate, deal each other player an encounter card. And it's got three acceleration tokens, four threat. Then we get no longer worthy, attached to Apocalypse and heal five hit points uh, per player from him. He cannot take damage while prelates minions in play. Ignore the force interrupt on the main scheme. When Apocalypse is defeated, the players win the game. So the force interrupt is the reset, I believe. Yeah. When Apocalypse would be defeated. Yeah, okay. You, re you reset it, put threat. Obviously, he can be defeated now. All right. Then we look at the prelates. So first we have Mr. Sinister, who's a 1-1-5 one, one, health per player. Retaliate 1, Toughness, Villainous, Victory 3. Mrs. Sinister engages the first player. And I'm hoping the victory points are, are relevant in this campaign. Uh, we've got the Shadow King, Scheme 3, Attack 1, five, threat per, uh, 5 health per player. Tough, Victory 3, Shadow King engages the first player. After the Shadow King attacks you... Choose an ally you control with the highest thwart. Either discard that ally or place threat on the main scheme equal to that thwart value. Abyss, which is 2-2. Two, two. Toughness, victory 3. 5 health per player. Abyss gets plus 2 hit points for each face down card attached to him and engages the first player. After Abyss activates against you, attach the top card of your deck to him face down. So you lose cards and he gets more hit points. Sugar Man, which is 1-3. Uh, toughness, Victory 3. Sugar Man engages the first player. When Sugar Man, uh, 5 health per player. 
when Sugar Man attacks, this attack gains piercing. If this attack defeats a character, heal 5 damage from Sugar Man. Mikhail Rasputin, tough. Victory 3, 2 scheme, 2 attack, 5 health per player. Mikhail Rasputin engages the first player. When Mikhail Rasputin attacks you, deal 1 damage to your identity. All right. Not that you can ignore Apocalypse during all this either. As the battle unfolds, the tyrant will upgrade himself with superpower attachments, such as cyberpathy, biomorphing, and molecular control. The only way to get rid of these attachments is to reduce Apocalypse hit points to zero, triggering the main scheme's effect, which means the longer you let him gain, uh, gather power, the more difficult he'll be to take down. He can also power up his minions with the fittest, respond to your challenge of his rule with the Apocalypse solution. It is clear that this is one tyrant who does not like to lose. All right. So let's take a look at those cards. So first we have Cyberpathy. Uh, attached to Apocalypse. It's a superpower. He gets plus one scheme. After Apocalypse schemes, place one threat on each side scheme. Uh, and it's a boost. We would attach the card to Apocalypse. Biomorphing, attached to Apocalypse. Apocalypse attacks gain overkill and gets plus one attack. And if it comes out as a boost, attach this card to Apocalypse. Molecular Control, attached to Apocalypse. Apocalypse gains Retaliate and Stalwart. Uh, and if it comes out as a boost, attach this card to Apocalypse. The fittest, plus one, plus one, attached to the minion with the highest printed hit points and give it a tough status. Otherwise, this card gains surge. Attach enemy gains plus five hit points. The apocalypse solution. Um... Apocalypse would rather burn his kingdom to the ground than surrender his rule. Discard the top X cards of the encounter deck where X is the numeral in Apocalypse's printed hit point value. So trying to get an acceleration token. All right. Now, the Dark Riders. We'll go over that when we get to the blow up here of the card the threats don't stop there either to aid him in taking you down apocalypse calls upon the dark riders this fanatical team can hammer you with relentless assaults as more and more of them are revealed and each of their attacks come paired with a nasty effect for example gauntlet can discard your upgrades barrage can hit you with well a barrage of damage and hard drive can put threat on the main scheme and side schemes alike. These abilities trigger regardless of if the Dark Riders actual deal any damage. So you'll need to work together with your allies to send them packing. Okay, let's take a look at those. So we got the Dark Riders. They're, the Dark Riders live by the action. The weak must perish. Uh, hinder, one per player, starts with two. Each Dark Rider minion gains toughness. When revealed, discard cards from the encounter deck until a Dark Rider's minion is discarded and reveal it. Then we have Gauntlet. Gauntlet is a 2-2, two, two, 5 hit points. Teamwork, Dark Riders, 
Oh, goody. So they got the teamwork ability. After Gauntlet attacks you, discard an upgrade you control. Barrage, teamwork, Dark Riders, one, two, four hit points. After Barrage attacks you, deal one damage to each character you control. And Hard Drive. Hard Drive is a 2-1 teamwork, Dark Riders. After Hard Drive attacks you, place one threat on each scheme. So that's four of the six cards. So there's probably two more um, Dark Riders. Speaking of working together, the Age of Apocalypse expansion also brings about a rule change regarding how the teamwork keywords work in oh in all Marvel Champions products. In the past, whenever a minion with a teamwork entered play, it would cause every minion on that team to activate at once. With the re with the release of Age of Apocalypse, the keyword will instead cause only the minion that just entered play to activate, so long as they have at least one teammate in play. In a way, this means the teamwork keywords now function similar to the quick strike keyword, except the minion could attack or scheme. Depending on the form the players they engage with, uh, this scales more fairly in a higher player count than before, while also giving you incentive to stop the minions from assembling their team. Well, that's nice because, yeah, teamwork can really be brutal. Uh, no longer worthy. Just getting to Apocalypse is no easy task, and actually defeating him is a trial of its own. You and your fellow heroes will have to bring your A-game if you want to bring the tyrant down and claim victory at last. That said, this scenario is only the midpoint of the campaign. What could be coming next? Keep your eye out in the coming weeks for the next Age of Apocalypse scenario preview. Yeah, so this is the third scenario of the five. And th this is the last of the known villains from the initial article. So we had Unus for s the first scenario, the Horseman of Apocalypse for the second scenario, and Apocalypse himself for the third. And we don't know who the fourth and fifth um, villains are. So this is kind of following the same pattern as um, Mad Titan Shadow, uh, where Thanos was... The big bad that everything was leading up to and he was the third villain and then we had hell on loki as as like a surprise so looks like we're gonna know who the villains are um this time but they're still following the same process with um the big bad being the third scenario so that's interesting um okay so it seems like it's about every two weeks or so they've been having the new article so we'll be able to see article four soon and then article five and then shortly after article five comes out then the product should come out so i'm looking forward to this and i like that the the teamwork uh, power is changing um that's good news um okay well with that um, I think we'll, I will sign off. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Hey, f hey everyone. If you like that, we got more videos. They should be on the screen. And you can subs subscribe in the lower right-hand corner. Thank you.